Your name is? My name is Jason. What are you doing here? I'm following the Ajami. <laughs> I'm trying to find what this thing is about. Hello, my name is Ajahn Jyoti Palo, and we are guests of Jason, or Jason's a guest. I'm, I'm the guest here. Okay, he's, he's the talent. <laughs> We've been out here three or four other occasions, and I, I said I wanted to do an interview with mm. him, and I end up doing all the talking. This is about Jason. Oh, oh, okay. Hello. <laughs> We're pretty sure we found footprints of a wolf. Yeah, they're big, big prints. So we found them in different locations. Mm -hmm. So if we end up getting up and running away, <laughs> no, no why. Yeah. And we actually did see a coyote. We did, yeah. It was um, uh, small, medium sized. I mentioned here at the beginning that you know, I've been you know, impressed with you about the questions you ask. It's not just a question that you would ask to another person who's practicing, like how they practice. I saw an event happen last week where I could see you were questioning internally. Yeah. What was happening with you? Yeah. Do you want to yeah. say something about that? Um, okay, so I'll start with the context and I'll go into my own internal situation, I guess we could call it. Due to the food shortages uh, in Kamloops because of the flooding, uh, the grocery, the superstore was almost completely empty. There was, the produce aisles had garlic and ginger. The meat aisles was completely bare and people, they, uh, they panicked. I went to the grocery store to try and gather some supplies to feed everyone and there wasn't enough. So I went to another grocery store. When walking around, I found some vegetables and I found some uh, p big piece of pork. Uh, pork loin and so I was like okay well I'll get two of these but the next time it was my turn to prepare a meal for everyone the the night before I'd, I'd made a, a brine of herbs and spices and salt and sugar and water and I had set the pork up in the brine left it overnight and the next day right away after breakfast I get started on cooking I take the pork out patting it dry making sure that all the spices are off the skin so that they don't uh, stick into the flesh and burn when it cooks. I set it down. Uh, I'll prepare other parts of the meal. So I got working on some mashed potatoes, some uh, raw vegetables, which I chopped up. An hour before the meal starts, I start preheating the oven and heating up a frying pan. And I take the big piece of pork and then I put it in the oven, 350 degrees, and I cooked it for 45 minutes. I pull it out and it's 10.50, it's still soft in the middle. And I start to kind of get upset. It's like, oh, well, this is not going how I wanted it to. Uh, things are not um, looking very optimistic for in terms of the meal being on time. So I put it back in the oven and carried on. And then um, 11.20 comes around and we, we try to eat by 11. So Ajahn Jyotipalo came to visit the kitchen he was instructed to come to the kitchen. Yes, yes, but um, um, I'll tell you the story from my perspective yes. and then I'll kind of fill it in as to how my reaction unfolded. So I see Ajahn come in. It's like, oh, uh, well, what's, I guess um, I'm taking a little long. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, it's something, I don't, I was in a little of a panic, so I don't remember what I said totally. So I was surprised. It's like, oh, what's going on? Uh, I know I'm late. I didn't realize how late. It's like, oh, oh, Ajahn says that, we have to serve without the pork. The thing, this, this piece of animal flesh that I've put so much effort into is just not, uh, I, have to, I have to renounce it, I have to get, I have to just accept that it's not gonna go the way I want it to. So that was very difficult for me to swallow. I, I was talking, I was looking at Ajahn upset and then it's like, okay, whatever. And I just, I hit the, I, I didn't even open the door, I just hit cancel on the oven and walked downstairs with my, my head hanging. I was upset and the food just tasted awful. Uh, people around me were saying what I did cook was okay, but just my state of mind, it just, everything around me tasted awful and the people felt so close to me and the ceilings felt low and the floor felt high and the room felt cold and, and my body felt hot and it was like this just, it was suffering. It was just this, I could feel it and like a, fe like a excuse me, like a festering wound. I carry on doing dishes, not really talking, keeping quiet, just trying to 
control myself, keep my emotions from uh, impacting the people around me. And people are trying to cheer me up and they're saying things that are, are pleasant and, and, and whatnot, as good friends do. The Ajahn who I made the, the, the keto pork for, who um, in terms of diet and food was most affected by the missing piece of meat. So what he had to eat, I think, I didn't see what he served himself, was raw vegetables, cheese, nuts, and peanut butter, I guess. Now this is lunch, because I had made a mistake with the, the pork. So he said to me, I think he quoted someone, it was, um, I, I can't remember who he quoted, but what he said was, um, there is absolutely nothing worth suffering over. Nothing in the whole universe. Kind of made me realize like I'm, I'm a victim of my own doing, my own doing. And the doing isn't that the pork was undercooked. The doing was the rumination of the pork being undercooked. And, um, and then I, I kind of, I had this, sorry for the noise. I had that in the back of my head for the rest of the evening. So after the dishes were done, I kind of wandered up to my room, head full of clouds and dark clouds. And just with this back of my mind, like I am suffering, but it's not worthy. What, what happened is not worthy of the pain that I'm feeling. So I remember feeling miserable for the whole day, had an hour long nap, trying to read a book. I couldn't get my mind interested. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm feeling crappy. I'm just going to sit and try to meditate and like feel what I'm feeling, not run from it, not cover it up, just feel it. So I sat probably 10 minutes <laughs> sitting like, this is what I'm feeling. This is present. This is not, this is not an illusion. This is, this is real. This is reality. This unpleasantness is not fake. It's not because of the circumstance. The circumstance is past, but the feeling is still here. Why? Does it need to be? Uh, the, the time came, I, I decided to come to go have a shower. I find I, I, I think in the shower and I thought maybe that would help. So I go to the shower. It's like, oh, um, I don't need to. I give up. It's like I don't need to. I don't need to suffer over this anymore. And then that was it. Like I just kind of it's like, oh, it's okay. Just I don't know what happened, how it happened, but all of a sudden it's like I. This is not something I'm going to suffer over. It's like I made um, a choice not to do anything, but to give up what I was doing. And then from there. The problem dissolved and I felt better. Very powerful insight. You know, very, and it's great that you didn't actually run away from it. Like you said, you, yeah. yeah, you took an hour nap. That's kind of sometimes can be kind of viewed as like annihilation. Just I don't want to exist. I think I think it was, to be honest, yeah. John. From, from my perspective, it's like when I, when I came in and, t and told you, you started to say something to me. Yeah. That I think you yeah. immediately realized that's, that's unskillful. And I just looked at you. I said, "No, no, this this is not coming from me. Yeah, I'm, I'm just passing on to you what Ajahn told me." And I remember for myself, it was a really powerful learning experience because I was looking at my own. It was like, you never want to say something or do something that's going to make someone else feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So like, I can immediately. I didn't think it was going to be an issue. I just thought, like, you know, okay, just don't serve it. We'll serve it tomorrow. Yeah. And then I saw your reaction. I was like, oh no, he's he's hurt by that. Was yeah. Like, you know, hey, this is it's okay. You know? Yeah, I, I think that's interesting what you say. Like you don't want to cause that feeling suffering on someone else, but really it's not. You can't cause suffering in someone else. Like they cause it in themselves. Like it's not, like, yeah. the same situation. Two people can react differently. One peop one person can be not affected at all, and the other person can have a miserable rest right. of their day. What I learned from it, and I saw it really clearly. My insight was is that that five years ago would have devastated me for the day. Mm. I would have felt horrible and mm -hmm. like I did something wrong or tried to figure out how I could have mm. done it. But it was so clear to me that it was like, you know, that I had an expectation of not wanting to hurt you. Yeah. And you had an expectation of the meal's gonna be beautiful. 
it was all set up by expectation. Yeah, yeah. And so I clearly saw it as for both of us is not so. Yeah, yeah. And so it was just like when I, when it, you know, because it occasionally would sort of rear up for me the rest of the day. And I was just like, well, no, I, I have no reason to be upset with you yeah. for your reaction because you were reacting to a chemical reaction that happened in your body. Yeah. It was you. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It, and it was just like, oh. it was so powerful for me. Yeah. So it's like, I hate to say this, but your suffering was a great teaching. Uh, yeah. You don't need to hate to say that, Ajahn. I'm, I'm happy to have helped you. And to be honest, you helped me as well. Your composure in the face of my suffering helped me to see that it was just, just this, the suffering was just being right. spun up like inside. If I, had, if I had yelled at you in the moment, oh, you shouldn't be that way. Then, then I would have escalated and then I wouldn't have seen it as, as my own. But it was like, um, it was like a mirror, right? Yeah. It's like I could, by, by not realizing that I was reacting and, and being um, unskillful. Oh, I'm cold. <laughs> I, was say, I think this part of the yeah. interview is what's going to make it to the final cut. The, us this, being cold? <laughs> it's five degrees here just a few minutes ago. It, it's, that, it's probably like zero, yeah. yeah. So, to the audience who is appreciating Tyson's honesty here, I think you're sharing something that I think everyone's going to love. Oh, okay. Um, I hope we are so. going to run away now. <laughs> because it's kind of cold outside. Okay, Jason, thank yes. you for... You see, isn't this great when Jody Paula just shuts up and just listens? You can learn a lot. Oh, but we also learn when he speaks. <laughs> Two of us riding nowhere, spending someone's hard earned pay. You and me, Sunday driving, not arriving on our way. Going home